this video, we will look at how settlement calculations are undertaken in practice. Take the following soil stratigraphy revealed by a site investigation. We note there is a strata of soft, normally consolidated soil that extends for a depth of 5 metres below stratum 1. The water table is located here and the architect wants to construct a three-storey building on top of a raft foundation. The size of the raft is such that the loading can be considered as one-dimensional. That is, there is no strain in the x-direction and this assumption holds true except for the ends of the raft. The geotechnical engineer is not concerned about the settlement of the sand as it will essentially be complete before the final finishes are applied to the building. There is a concern, however, about the long-term consolidation settlement of the clay layer due to the stress transmitted through the raft. To evaluate this, an undisturbed sample recovered during the site investigation is subjected to an odometer test in the lab. In this test, a specimen taken from the sample tube is carefully inserted into a rigid ring. The specimen is then inundated and subjected to a series of increasing stress increments. Each increment causes an increase in pore water pressure and this dissipates through porous plates above and below the specimen. While this is happening, measurements are continuously recorded until the settlement is essentially complete. Typically, this takes 24 hours. The loading process continues until the specimen is subjected to a stress well in excess of that to be experienced in the ground. The resulting void ratio versus applied stress plot looks like this. Note that the steepness of the plot reduces as the applied stress increases and also, when fully unloaded, the final void ratio is much less than the initial value. Note also, as the ring is rigid, compression is constrained to take place in the vertical direction, that is, it is one dimensional vertically, and as such, the odometer test provides a good representation of the loading conditions beneath the raft. Next, for the clay layer, we need to calculate the in situ vertical effect of stress due to the overburden and the change in stress from the new construction. It's normal practice to divide the consolidating stratum into a number of layers, particularly if it exceeds 3 metres in thickness. However, in this case, we will take the layer as a whole and use the stresses at the centre as being representative of the overall stratum. The vertical effect of stress at the centre of the clay layer is therefore equal to the unit weight of the sand times the depth of the sand plus the unit weight of the clay times half the thickness of the clay layer minus the unit weight of water times half the thickness of the clay layer and the increase in stress at the centre of the clay due to the construction is equal to delta stress. Plotting these on the laboratory curve for the odometer test allows us to calculate the change in void ratio. Using this, we can estimate the consolidation settlement from the relationship established earlier, where H0 is equal to the initial thickness of the consolidating strata, delta E is obtained from our E stress plot, and E0 is the initial void ratio obtained from the odometer test. Click here to continue with the next video.